Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. This is episode 12, so make sure if you haven't seen all the previous episodes to check them out. Uh, there's a nice playlist on my channel. Feel free to go check them out, episodes one through 11. On our previous episode, we finished modeling the main components of our kitchen. Um, so first we did the back utility wall, then we did the island with a couple cool little features in there. On this episode, we are going to start applying materials for the use of rendering in live scenes in Enscape. Um, so with, with that, uh, we're gonna talk about a kind of three approaches to material uh, application in Revit. One is utilizing existing materials that ex exist out of the box in Revit. The other is taking those materials and modifying them a little bit for our need. And then finally, uh, creating custom materials uh, essentially from scratch, but you'll see some tips that mean you don't have to start completely from scratch. Before we jump into this episode, I did want to thank our sponsor, RevitFamily.biz. For those of you who want to uh, save 20% off, uh, use offer code 2022RevitKid. Let's check out this little video of what Brenton has to offer. All right, so without further ado, I think it's time to jump in and we're gonna continue on our little journey here of building this kitchen, again, with the end goal of creating a presentation for this particular client. Um, so uh, focusing on materials now, we've pretty much been in white mode in Enscape, and if you don't know what that is, definitely check out uh, previous episodes. Uh, we've been in white mode to sort of um, get a feel for the space, but not be too distracted by materials. Um, and uh, now we're gonna jump in and we're actually gonna start applying materials. So with that, let's jump into Revit and let's do it. All right, so here we are. This is the kitchen as you guys have seen it uh, with the island, um, with the cabinets and so on. And you'll see the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually um, just copying and pasting material names. Uh, the nice thing about these families is that uh, the materials are instance parameters, which is pretty helpful in this case. Um, and so I'm just copying and pasting this um, um, white, painted white material um, into the cabinet material of these different types and instances. Um, I can't do it all at the same time just because of the different types of cabinets they are. But this is just a simple copy paste of the material name into the properties. And then you can see now the middle cabinets are white of the island, I should say. And then we look at the countertop. So with the countertop, you can see there was no uh, material applied. So I'm gonna go into the material editor. I'm going to uh, rename this one countertop white because I'm playing with this idea of the island having basically the reverse of the of the materials of the back wall. So, you know, a wood, wood countertop with, uh, let's say, white uh, cabinets for the island and then maybe a white countertop with the wood cabinets for the, for the utility wall. So you'll notice here, I go over to appearance and then I, I go to load a new appearance and I'm actually just digging through the Autodesk appearance uh, library. And you'll also notice that in this area, um, there's little uh, thumbnails that have that yellow caution sign and little ones that don't. Um, when you're using new newer Revit, which at this point in time, I would imagine you guys all are, um, and the newer Enscape, which at this point in time, I imagine you are, you wanna make sure you use the materials that don't have that caution sign. That caution sign means they're not physically based materials and they will not look as realistic in your renderings. <clears throat> so now I'm actually gonna build a little tile backsplash here. Um, so I'm using a, a wall. I'm just gonna use a wall in front of my drywall, um, a thinner wall, so a quarter inch, I think I'm probably gonna make it. And it's gonna be a white subway tile. So you can see I just made a brand new wall type. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new material now for that wall type. And I'm going to uh, make it a subway tile essentially. And so you'll see, I just said new material, rename it. So I'm starting from scratch, just right click new material, rename it white tile backsplash, uh, make it white and give it a, a pattern, uh, a model pattern uh, for graphics. So when you're doing interior um, elevations and so on and so forth. Now I go over to the appearance tab. I say replace asset and I'm searching for tile. You'll notice the first thing I'm doing in almost all these materials, is I'm looking through the Autodesk assets, the physical assets, to see if there's something close. You almost always wanna do that. Start with something close to what you're trying to create, even when you create a custom material, and then you can always flip out the, the images to what you want, but if you're starting with something that's close to what you need, um, you're always gonna get a better end product. So you see I'm flipping through tiles, and you'll notice none of these tiles actually have the yellow caution. So these are all new physically based materials. I click replace, 
and you can see here if I zoom into this this is a really nice white tile and I'm going to leave this as is so I'm using a default material here but of course I dug a little to find it it's not the one that's built into the into the family itself so now I take my quarter inch wall <clears throat> and I just simply draw it along the backsplash uh, this is really just behind the stove in this particular incense, uh, image go to my elevation hit WF for wireframe so I could see it and then adjust my uh, base uh, offsets and so on and so forth. For some reason, it was set to negative 12. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe it thought it was a foundation. And you can see there's my there's my um, tile backsplash uh, behind the uh, range. For that, I just aligned. So I use AL on my keyboard, and I aligned the model pattern because maybe it was a model pattern for the surface pattern, and I aligned it to um, the center of the range. Here I'm just setting my 70, 50, 20 rule for anyone who follows along on the blog and on the YouTube channel. Uh, this is my sort of graphic settings. If you don't know what that is, I will put a link above to a video where I talk about it, but it's just my graphic settings for all my views that looks really, really nice. So as you can see, my zebra fire gray is the uh, the material that I'm starting with, um, which I think might have been one of the default materials from um, Brenton's families. And I'm just really start playing with the hues of it and the saturation for the wood cabinets, I should say. So now you can see I've changed the cabinets to equal the same uh, material as the countertop on the island. And now we're going to flip over to Enscape and let's see how this looks by default without tweaking too many things. So flip it from white mode to none. And now you can see we, we're starting to see some materials. And it's actually for first pass, it's actually not looking too bad at all. Um, the materials have some nice reflections. The colors are good. You can see that subway tile and that countertop in the back looks phenomenal with the reflections. I think I'll zoom into that here. You can see that subway tile, how nice that looks. And that's just the default, uh, a default tile in Revit. And again, the key here is making sure that you're using those physically based materials. Um, they have a few other reflection parameters and so on and so forth that you really want to use, especially when you're using Enscape, but in general uh, that you want to use across the board. Um, here I'm just opening a couple inspiration images that the client sent me to get some ideas of the look and feel of the materials that they were, that they were thinking of. And because of that, um, you can see I'm actually going to start messing around with some of the wood material to see if that that color that was in that one inspiration image, um, I can get it a little closer to it. Um, so you can see I'm going from that zebra wood to a cherry uh, type of wood. Which has a little bit of a, of a closer feel. It's not as not as harsh um, of, of, a, of a brown. It's got a little bit more of a uh, orangey look to it. And then I'm going to play with, I'm just clicking into the image and playing with the size of that texture. Um, so just playing with the sample size to see if uh, making that grain a little bigger or smaller um, is going to get the desired result I'm looking for. So made it a little bit smaller. And then, of course, if you do this, if you change the image, um, then you have to change the roughness, the relief patterns, the reflections, any of the any of the other um, images that go along with it. Um, you have to make sure you change all the sizes equally in Revit. They're not linked together, unfortunately, um, in that sense. So now you can see we're getting a nice, a nice, uh, a little more subtle feel, a little less, a uh, little less saturation to that, to that color of the cabinets. And now with this, I decided I'm going to try something different with the island material. So I just created a brand new material and I'm calling it countertop island. So now I'm just creating a brand new material from scratch. You can see it's defaulted. I'm going to go to replace. And remember the whole thing here is starting with a material that's close to what you want. So I'm going to go for like a granite slash dark concrete look to it. So you can see I just pulled in a concrete aggregate uh, polished uh, sort of material. And even if I'm applying a custom material to this, um, I'm starting with a material that's similar to what I'm going to create custom. So I took that now and I go to my custom material library. And I just changed the actual image in this one to a dark, um, it's a, a dark uh, concrete slate looking color. And you can see, um, even if I leave the, the polished concrete roughness and the relief pattern the way it was, um, if I'm just changing out the image itself, so the diffuse image, you can see I'm getting an interesting result, uh, which is kind of this, this uh, polished concrete, sort of a dark look to it. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in Enscape in one second. There you go. So now it's kind of this dark, dark polished concrete look to it. So kind of cool. And you can see how quickly you could create a custom image. You don't have to start from scratch to create a custom material. My biggest suggestion when it comes to that, and look how nice that reflection is. You could see some of the bumps and the reliefs. Uh, 
uh, in that in that material itself, it looks looks phenomenal. Um, and and all that was was taking a polished concrete material, leaving everything, all the settings as well as it was, and just flipping out the the diffuse texture, which is the main texture on top of it. And here you can get a sense of how the materials are looking now, and how they all interact with each other. So there you have it in 12 minutes or so, uh, just running through uh, application of materials to the countertops, to the to the counters themselves, uh, to the backsplash, the tile wall. We created a custom material. We created, uh, we, we used default out of the box materials. In the next episode, we're going to finish this out by um, putting a material on the floor. Obviously, you, you may have saw that there wasn't a material on the floor yet. Uh, we're gonna add some lighting in it and we're gonna start getting ready to render this thing out. And so you could see, hopefully, uh, you could see uh, how far this thing has developed over the last 12 episodes from the hand sketch to the laser scan to the hand sketch to the to the uh, rough sketched cabinets to, uh, to what we see here. So pretty exciting to see it unfolding. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Uh, thank you to RevitFamily.biz for sponsoring this episode. Again, thank you guys for joining me. Please subscribe to the channel here. I look forward to episode 13, where we're going to continue adding lighting and materials and really getting ready to present this and then finally presenting it to our client. So thank you guys and talk soon.